it's the CP here. Um, today I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a hot process soap making video. My Castile soap video, surprisingly, has gotten a lot of views and there's been a lot of questions and people want to make soap for gifts, but with cold process, you know you have to let it cure for about six weeks before you can use it. But with hot process, you're able to use it pretty much as soon as it hardens. So I'm going to bring you in for a quick video tutorial on how to do hot process soap. It, you can use the same recipe that was found in my cold process soap or you can use the recipe that I'm going to do here. Any, pro any recipe that you use for cold process, you can basically use it for hot process as well. So I'm going to bring you in closer, show you everything that we're going to need and I'll be right back. Okay. So the things that you're going to need, uh, I'll put the entire recipe in the link below so you guys can get the weights of everything. Everything is measured by weight when it comes to making soap. It's the most accurate way you can get the right measurements. Everything is measured by weight. Today I'm going to be using olive oil, which are these two cups, castile oil, and coconut oil. And then of course you're going to need your distilled water and your lye. Some of the other equipment I'm using is my stick blender. This is strictly for making soap. And when you start making soap, make sure you, you don't use the same utensils you use to make your meals that you use to make your soap. You wanna keep them separated. You wanna have different things for everything. And, and then we're also going to need, which my crock pot is really hot, is a crock pot, which is over here. And it's really, really hot. And of course, gloves and Eye protection, if you don't wear glasses, I wear glasses, mine are pretty good. And then I've also got a big old bottle of vinegar on the ground in case somehow I manage to get light on me. And then if necessary, some sort of like breathing, if you don't have good ventilation where you're going to be doing this, either mix the lye outside or under your stove hood vent, somewhere where you have really good ventilation because you don't want to breathe this fumes in. Now, I mentioned it in my last video, whenever you are making soap, when you do your lye mixture, you're always wanting to pour your lye into your water. Never your water into your lye. Because if you try to pour your water into your lye, it foams up, it could cause an explosion, just don't ever do it. I've never tried to see what happens with it, so I'm just going to stick with what everybody has ever told me, lye into water. So we're just going to pour it in here. Again, you do not want to breathe this in. And you're just going to stir it around. Make sure we get everything out of the cup. I'm just going to give it a good, good stir. And this is actually going to become clear after it's done dissolving. It'll be completely clear. So I'm just going to set that aside and let it do its thing. Okay, I've got my lye sitting aside so it can completely dissolve. Take this spatula out of there first. And then you want all of your oils to be liquid form. Obviously, co the coconut oil, it's cold here, so it's solid. So we're gonna wanna have that melt down before we get to adding the lye to it. So we're gonna just let everything in the crock pot and let it just melt down for a little bit. It'll only take a few minutes in the crock pot. I preheated mine. So I'm going to let that melt down and I will bring you back once the coconut oil is completely melted. Okay guys, so my oils have pretty much melted down. And so I'm going to add in my lye now. I'm just going to want to add it slowly and kind of stir as you go, just like the whole process. And, and as you can see, well, well, I don't know, can you see? Let me see. Don't try this at home. 
the lie is actually clear now. Just going to give that a quick stir. And then it's going to get noisy. I'm going to pull out my stick blender and apparently I need a new stick blender because mine doesn't want to work very well. But you're going to want to bring this to a light trace. And basically it's like a a pudding consistency where when you drag it on top, see like right now I don't, it just drips in, it doesn't leave any type of marking. But give it a second and I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> So I've mixed it pretty well. I don't know if you guys can see it on there, but when I bring this up, it kind of leaves a marking on where the stick blender was at. And that's what you want. That's basically a light trace right there. So now all we're going to do is what I do is I grab my spatula and you just want to make sure you get all the oils that are on the side down into your soap because those will cook a lot faster and then you'll get like these hard lumps of soap in your soap and you don't want that. So now I've got my crock pot set on low. I'm just going to put the top on it. And I'm going to leave it alone and I will bring you guys back once it's cooked for a little while and show you the process of what it looks like and that way you know when it's done. I'll be back. Okay guys, so my soap has been cooking for about 10 minutes so I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Excuse the noise in the background, my cat is going spastic right now. But as you can see, right around here it's starting to fold in on itself and that's what you're looking for. You wanted to actually do that. And it'll actually, I'm going to wait until it comes all the way into the middle before I do anything else with it. It's going to be tempting. You're going to want to stir it. You're going to want to play with it. But don't. Just put the lid on it. Leave the lid on it. And just let it do its thing. So I will bring you back when I am ready to actually kind of stir it up. Okay, guys. So it's been about 45 minutes. As you can see, my, my soap is pretty much folded in on itself right now. So I'm going to give it a quick stir because as you can see, there's some oil that has separated. So I want to make sure that gets incorporated into it. And it's kind of got like a mashed potato-y consistency to it. And that's what you're looking for is that mashed potato look. And so just give it a quick stir. Make sure you scrape the edges really well. And I'm, ooh, ooh, no, don't escape me. And I'm just going to let it sit for probably about another five, ten minutes, and then I will show you what the next step is. Okay, guys, so I've let it cook down just a little bit more, and as you can see, it definitely resembles mashed potatoes and that's what you're looking for you want it to complete be completely incorporated no oil sitting on the top and just like this it's pretty darn thick so at this point if you're going to add any type of colorant or scent this is the time to do it I'm doing a candy cane type soap and with hot process it's really hard to get like the colorant in there once it's already processed but I'm going to do like a red kind of swirl with it. So the only thing I'm really going to do is I'm just going to make a little pocket right here. And I've already got some of my red mica mixed in with a little bit of oil. And I'm just going to kind of pour that in. Not make a giant mess with it. I'm just going to kind of just mix it in a little bit. And then I've got my mold here as well. If you're going to add any essential oils, Add it before you put your colorant in so you can get a really good scent throughout which I didn't add my colorant I completely or not my colorant my 
essential oil and I'm using peppermint essential oil because we're doing candy canes. So let me just add some of that in there. And you're gonna add probably about two to three ounces, depending on how strong you like your scent. So I've got my mold. I'm just using a silicone soap mold. It's a loaf mold from Wilton. So let me try to get this in. Okay, so I've got my loaf mold and my soap. So all I'm going to do is kind of just give it a quick swirl around. And then just kind of plop it in there. I'm trying to keep the color kind of separated. The one thing about hot process soap is when it's thick like this, it's not going to bleed into each other too much. So just trying to make sure everything is kind of even on each side when it comes to red and the white. And this smells awesome. I love peppermint. I'm not a fan of candy canes per se, but I just, I love the smell of peppermint. I use it in a lot of my homemade lotions and body butters and all that stuff. It's just yummy. Now a lot of people say don't scrape the sides because you'll get lumps of soap and everything. It, it's really up to you if you want the hard because like right here it's pretty hard it, and, and it's hot but that's essentially it's just soap. And when you're doing the hot process soap, you're able to use it right away because it cooks down the lye, and so you don't have to wait for it to cure. And since Christmas is right around the corner and I haven't made any of my soap gifts yet, this works out quite well for me. So, because I'm using this. Now, since I'm using a silicone pad, I've got a cookie tray underneath it just so I can, it's a lot easier to tap it down with the tray. And essentially, I'm just trying to get all the air bubbles out. And I'm just going to malt to use my, my little skewer that I use to mix my colorant. And I'm just going to kind of just swirl it around, make sure I get all the air pockets out. Everything gets put in the corners. And this is where you can really go crazy at the top because you can play with it for quite a while before it starts to harden up on you. And that way you can just get the design that you want on the top. If you want it smooth, you're not gonna get it completely smooth, but if you don't want like chunks sticking up, you can kind of smooth it out. I'm just gonna kind of swirl it around. I'm gonna go all the way down with my, my skewer just so I can get all the colors kind of swirled around inside there. it and then once this is I'm gonna play with this for a little bit longer to get the consistency I want on the top and once it's ready to cut I will bring you guys back okay guys so this is my favorite part we're going to unfold the soap I actually let it sit out overnight because well I fell asleep so don't judge me I was tired so just to, I got to pull it away from the edges just to pull it out and get it I can tell you already it just it smells so yummy. That's why I love these silicone molds because it makes it really easy to unmold. Oh, doesn't that look pretty? So I'm going to try to cut this so you guys can kind of see it. I'm just going to cut an edge off. A 
couple more pieces. This is my favorite part about soap making is seeing the finished product because it just makes it, it's like a present every time you make soap just to open it up and cut it just to see how it has turned out. And the great thing is because it was hot process, if I wanted to, I could go and use it right now. There's no waiting for it to cure. And I am horrible at keeping like the size consistency and the straightness of it, but I do a pretty good job. It's homemade, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think it being a little unperfect just shows that it is homemade. Oh, I like that piece. That piece turned out really pretty. out of this and there you have it hot process so it takes a little bit longer than cold process but the benefit is you get to use it right away so I got what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen good fourteen pieces out of that that's pretty awesome so that is what I've got for you guys today. So be sure to subscribe and follow us over on Facebook and I'll put everything, all the crafts I do, I, I don't ever do them all on video, but they're on my Pinterest board. So if you want to follow me over there too, that's awesome too. So I will see you guys next time.